Now, one reason why your 1% battery might last a long time is that your phone's playing it safe. It has 1% battery left for you to use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, stream a movie, all while downloading a system update. But if you're just scrolling your feed, 1%'s gonna last a while. There's also a bit of psychology in it. When you see that your phone's about to turn off, it kind of encourages you to plug it in ASAP. By the way, modern batteries can't be fully charged or fully drained. If you live somewhere cold and your iPhone keeps turning off whenever it's below zero outside, go to Settings, Battery, and check the battery health. If it's less than 85%, you might want to think about changing the battery. Otherwise, it'll turn off every time you leave the house. Even if you just upgraded your old phone to a brand new one, don't forget to charge your old buddy regularly. Lack of charge may impact battery life. As long as you want to keep your old phone just in case, make sure you charge it at least a few times a year. Same goes for old game consoles and laptops. Embrace the dark mode if you want your phone to keep its charge as long as possible. The brighter your background is, the more energy it eats up. If you have dark mode installed, it'll use less power. If your laptop is a Mac and it has a backlit keyboard, change your settings to save some battery. Whenever you're not using your keyboard, the backlight should power off. Go to Keyboard Settings and choose how long you want the keyboard to stay on for. I have mine on for 5 seconds. To boost your Android, just turn off your data when you don't need it. If you disable the always-on mobile data, you'll have a longer battery cycle. Other things you can do are reduce brightness, opt for wired headphones instead of Bluetooth ones, and switch to airplane mode when you don't need active data. The last 20% of a battery takes longer to charge than the rest. That's because lithium-ion batteries are kind of complex. When the battery's low, the charger supplies a fixed current. It's all kind of complicated, but just keep it in mind. Your smartphone has a protection circuit in it to save its battery. When it shuts down and says you have 0% battery, there's actually a tiny bit of juice left in there. But your device is designed not to use it. If a modern battery somehow magically got to actual zero, you wouldn't be able to charge it again, and you'd have to get yourself a new phone. Now, don't drain the thing down to zero, then recharge it back to 100. Specialists say that the best range is between 20 to 90% if you want your battery to last longer. If you let the battery go down to zero all the time and then juice it back up, you can damage the inside materials and it can even cause battery corrosion. Now, it's not true that all chargers are created equal. The best thing you can do for your phone is to use its original charger. Yeah, some generic ABLE cable or adapter may look just as good as the original one, but why risk it? It might actually be a good charger, but it may be the wrong voltage. You don't know which country it came from. <laughs> Different voltages can potentially damage your gadget. Plus, generic chargers usually don't include any mechanism to protect your phone from energy surges. If the phone just won't charge, here's a few reasons why. A faulty cable, low current power source, or even a broken USB port. The most common problem is a damaged cable. Those things have to endure a lot. We constantly wrap them, fold them, twist them, drag them. I feel kind of bad now. Try a few different cables to see if that was the problem. If the cable just won't work, try cleaning the cable jack. Sometimes some random lint is hiding out in there, blocking the charge from going through. You can usually just blow on it. That won't work if the jack's rusty, though. Speaking of phone charging, it's also important to learn how to do it right. If you don't lock your phone when you're not using it, it may eat up too much of your battery. Phones usually have a default screen lock set for about 2 minutes, and that can eat into your battery life. Another tip is to avoid using mobile data, especially if the connection is poor. Your gadget's going to waste its charge just trying to find a connection. Temperature's important too. Don't expose your phone to direct sunlight. Overheating can drain your battery. Now, if there's no obvious reason why your phone's losing its charge so fast, you should probably pay attention to your cybersecurity settings. It could be a sign that someone's spying on you through an app or something else you downloaded. Leaving the phone cover on while it's charging isn't really a big deal, but it's not recommended either. 
the cover can trap the heat in, making the whole charging process way less effective. You shouldn't leave your phone under your pillow either, for the exact same reason. If you get super unlucky, it might even catch on fire. Ooh. If you just can't fall asleep without your phone, set a timer on it and leave it propped up on your bedside table. If you want to stop it from overheating, turn on airplane mode and leave your screen's brightness on minimum while charging it. If for some reason you want to stop using your phone for a while, charge it to 50% and turn it off. This percentage is said to be the healthiest for a lithium-ion battery. You can store it for a month like that with the least possible damage to your gadget. Don't forget to turn it on once every few months and top up the battery. Charging your phone overnight is something almost everyone's guilty of. Now, it may seem okay, especially if you have a smart charger that stops charging as soon as your phone gets to 100. But as soon as it drops below that, the charger will automatically top it up. This endless cycle goes on all night until you wake up and unplug it. Just like normal batteries, lithium-ion batteries don't like to be either fully charged or at zero. If you charge your phone and use it at the same time, you can confuse the battery a little bit. Hmm, here's what happens. Your phone gets charged, then whatever you're doing sucks out that energy. Then the charger tops the battery up again. These small cycles tire out the battery and shorten its lifespan you're probably not going to want to turn your gadget off while it's charging, in case you miss a text or something, but try not to use it too much. One more bad idea is to charge your phone in your car. They usually have less electricity than any phone actually needs to charge. Your car's USB ports are most likely low power, so your gadget might swallow up the power much faster than the port can dish it out. You might end up ruining your cable and battery, and your phone will barely get any charge. A rental car is even worse. You never know who used that port before you jumped in. Same goes for train stations and even trains. Data can be easily extracted from your phone, and public USB ports are notorious for juice jacking. Now, one thing you should probably never leave home without is a power bank. They're much safer than any public hub. Just make sure you get one that's meant for your phone. Check if it's not getting too hot while charging. The hotter the battery is, the less effective the charge. You might have downloaded a charge-saving app to help you stay away from the plug as long as possible. Unfortunately, these apps don't save you that much, and they can sometimes shut down apps you want to use. Anyway, most apps don't eat up battery when they're on in the background. Just make sure any apps that track your location are closed. They're the ones that drain your battery the most. You can restrict background apps yourself in the settings.